right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this final live stream session of Tennis Summit 2023. And I have who else? No one else but my great friend, Peter Freeman from Crunch Time Coaching. If you haven't seen his stuff, definitely check it out. But I'm really excited to have Peter on for this final live stream. We were brainstorming, you know, what sort of uh, lesson would be really helpful to you all to level up your game. And um, Peter and I came up with the four pillars of tennis success with Peter. Uh, pretty much Peter came up uh, with it. I'll give him full credit. Um, but we're excited to talk to you about this and just try to, you know, enrich your knowledge of the game and, and give you some actionable advice. So, um, Peter, it's always a pleasure to have you on. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And so, first of all, the four pillars, it's nothing I made up. And it was just reminded to me, I had, I was doing a hyper-focus camp. We had four players at my camp. It was raining. Jorge Capistani, master pro of everything, uh, was nice enough to do a mental presentation. And he was talking about the four pillars of tennis. And it was just kind of cool the way he went through it, which we'll go through it tonight. And as I was thinking about the four pillars, I was like, it reminded me of what we do, what we deliver in the tennis summit and tennis con. It's like, wow, you know, wow. We actually go through the four pillars. You went through the four pillars this week. So everybody pretty much has access to it if they want to review it. And so we're going to talk about what the four pillars are and, and how to really, you know, master this as much as possible uh, so that you can become the best player that you can be. That's really what I want to do on the last night of your tennis summit. And I just want to, before we get into the lesson, I want to congratulate you on another great effort. Um, you know, it seems like every couple hours I was getting an email about you going live with somebody and, <laughs> and it was all great stuff and uh, so much variety from having, you know, GG. we're just talking about the live stuff, not even all the other lessons, but I mean, you went live with, with Gigi and Dean Hollingworth and Jorge Capistani. We went live and I think you went live with Ryan Reedy as well, did you? Yeah. I, I mm -hmm. mean, it was it was incredible. So, I mean, just a great effort, and uh, congratulations. Thank you so much, Peter. I really appreciate it. And, yeah, I'm just really excited to, you know, get into the lesson for today and then also let you know about some really cool um, surprises we have for you. So what do you think, Peter? Should we go to the, uh, the sure. presentation? Okay. Well, let, let, let's uh, the video. see this out there. First of all, I see Jay. Is, oh, yeah. And he wants, he's picking it. He's picking it. So I, I'll let you know in a second if you're right. I don't want, I don't want to blow it. But uh, yeah, just as you come on in, maybe we'll give people a couple more minutes to come on in because I don't want people to miss this. Um, but it yeah. is 8.03. And uh -huh. so you know what I wanted to, before we get into the lesson, because I think we want to wait a couple minutes. Sure. I wanted, I want to talk to you about something I just saw before we went live. It's a rumor. I was watching a uh, tennis channel live update on YouTube. Okay. It is a rumor that Roger Federer might be a commentator during Wimbledon. What do you think about that? Ooh, that's How fantastic. Cool uh, that is that really be? cool. That is, that's great. I mean, with his knowledge of the game and experiences and uh, people just love, I mean, hearing him talk. So I think that's, that would be incredible if that happens. Um, yeah, I don't know what I, else I to think say. I that would be a <laughs> massive boost in the watch ratings. I, I think yeah. that from what I, what they were saying is ESPN, you know, might, might get them to be on part, part of them. And then okay. also the BBC. And mm. I think if he does that viewership will be way up and how cool would it be to have Roger Federer with John McEnroe commentate and Patrick McEnroe. And I mean, I, I just think that would be awesome. And I, I hope if he does it, cause I know it's going to be a no brainer. I know, I know people will tune in if, if Federer is going to be commentating. I mean, how crazy would it be to hear Federer commentating on a Djokovic, the Dow <laughs> final or something crazy like that. That would be like the yeah. ultimate dream. But I mean, certainly the Rays be through the roof and, and like once it goes well, once, you know, you, you better, better, you cannot leave us. He said in his, retirement speech i will not i love you and i will not leave you to tennis so uh, he's got to pull through on that we i see ian right. westerman is is on with us so he that's says, right yo, yo yo ian back. what's going on how are yeah. you frank great Long to see says, him fed and johnny mac 
That would be amazing, yes. says Angel. That's right. Daniel RF is awesome. Perfect with the RF, obviously. Angel, that's your main crush, Peter. Yeah. Uh, it is. Danita, hi, Pete and Miramon. Hello to you. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, it's great. So, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, you know, him having the insights of, like, oh, when I played Novak, I did this and that. And, you know, yeah. like, it would be amazing. But, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, because now we're getting a good amount of people on. It's it's 8.06, so I want to get into a lesson. But we've got to finish. You guys know what comes before <laughs> we get into our live streams. Uh... We have to do the the music trivia, which I, I don't know if Marabon's ever gotten one song right in life. Wow. We're, we're, up to, we're up to the Tennis Summit number seven. <laughs> I don't think he's ever picked out a song. It's insane. And it's not like I'm playing obscure stuff either. Can okay? you do like so, Drake or something? No. Ready? Okay. Yeah, hold on. Alexa, start the song. Here's a station you might no, like. No, 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 no. Oh, no, you're going to get this. Band. Alexa, play Dream on. Dream on. Oh, I, th I think I heard oh, you, dude. No. <laughs> Alexa, you blew it. Well, I didn't hear the song name though, so that's good. So you know, do you know that song? No, I didn't hear the song name. Uh, I just heard Alexa, the I... Alexa play play Dream On by Aerosmith. Oh, well, now you, now you... Well, we, we at least got to hear a little music. bit. Yeah, sure. Peter intentionally she tries to get my videos. Play. Alexa, play Dream On by Aerosmith. Banned from YouTube. Here's Dream On She's totally, by Aerosmith. She's totally on embarrassing me. Music. Hmm. Do you know this? That's a great song. Yeah. Oh, you do know it? Yeah. I do. Okay. Hmm. Classic song. All right. Now we can get started. Now we can start. Alexa, stop. Hmm. That's a great song. I love that song, actually. Uh, the first song Mirabon knew, I actually blew it. Gave it away. So <laughs> does, does he get credit for guys? Let us know. Does, no, does Mirabon get credit for that? I'm honest. I'm honest. I don't get credit. I don't get credit. I don't okay. Get credit. All right. Uh, let's okay. see. Jane. Sorry. Hello. Jane. Welcome back, Peter Mirabon. Oh, Jay, look. B2 puppy kisses. Yeah. B2's not oh. by me tonight. He's actually with my mom tonight. So. Okay. Okay. Cool. I oh. wish he was here. I wish he was right there, mm. but he's not. Okay. Wow. Somebody says no. Angel says no credit. Yeah, I, <laughs> I agree. I don't deserve it. Alexa messed up. I mean, we just, I had that all planned with Alexa. We talked about it before and she just, <laughs> of course, Georgia Bulldog would want some encouragement. Dream on. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. All guys, right. Let's, 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 do it. Let, let's get into this. The four pillars of uh, tennis mastery of tennis success uh, again, it was reminded to me by, by Jorge Capistan. I thought, wow, you know, Marabon has really delivered on the four pillars um, during the tennis summit. And, and I want this to be interactive like we did last time. And I want you guys to agree or disagree. Did, did he actually, in fact, deliver on these four pillars? So let's bring up uh, my little mini presentation and sure. we'll go through the four pillars and all that that includes. And, and so if you want to maximize your tennis game, you know that tennis, it's such a complex game uh, to master. And that's why it's, it, it can be very challenging and, and somewhat frustrating to a certain degree, but also a lot of fun. Um, so the first pillar that you've got to master if you want to be a pretty good player is technique. I think that tennis is one of those sports and, and, and some people look at it as a positive. I actually look at it as a positive. I love the challenge that, you know, you just can't really go out there and start playing tennis. Uh, I think it's good tennis without some decent instruction because there's a lot of moving parts to it. And to get the ball to go in well, you kind of have to know what you're doing. Um, and that's what I like about it. And not only is there just, you know, kind of one technique, there's so many techniques within it. You have your serve and with it and the serve, there's so many things that we want to get out of it. We want to get uh, a fast serve. That's the thing that most people, when they first start playing, they, they notice the speed on TV. Like I want to, I want a powerful serve. Everybody kind of sees that when they watch TV, like I want to serve that goes fast. And then the more you watch it, you kind of learn a little bit about the game. You're like, Oh, why also 
I'm going to need some spin. I want to learn how to hit a slice serve. And then all of a sudden you see the, the ball bounce really high and you're like, what was that? And then somebody tells you, well, that's a kick serve. Well, I want to learn that too, right? So just within the serve, you've got the, the technical part of being able to hit the ball fast with slice and kick and then placement and being able to hit a second serve with full confidence and full racketed speed. And we're just talking about the serve. Then you've got the forehand, which – you can hit with top spin. You can hit it flat. You can hit a forehand with slice. Same thing on the backhand. You can add all kinds of different heights and depths and angles and drop shots on both the forehand and the backhand. Then you have the approach shot to deal with, and you have high approach shot balls and low approach shot balls and, and uh, you know, a lot of things. And then you come to the net and now you've got to be able to put the ball away with drop shots and angle volleys and power volleys and overheads. And so that's the first pillar. So Maribon delivered a lot in the way of technique this year. Uh, you, you had Ryan Reedy and myself. Did Ryan, did Ryan Reedy cover the serve or not? Uh, no, he serve? did. Uh, let's see. Oh, we did. Um, uh, racket flex day day mm. mm -hmm. yeah so kind of walk us through maribon that first pillar when we're talking about technique what you try and focus on what you try and deliver name some of the presentations you had to refresh people on maybe all the different shots that they can go to and review if they get the lifetime access pass what is in the tennis summit when it comes to being able to master pillar number one. Yeah. I mean, and, and just kind of as, as a preface too. I mean, the technique, you know, it's, it's, we have been talking about how important strategy is um, as well for players, but I mean, technique allows you to implement more strategy and, you know, raise the ceiling of, of your level of your game. So it, it is very important and it's, it's a really fun aspect of the game that I love to work on. You know, I'm working right now on my serve technique and my backhand technique as well, constantly trying to improve those so to raise that ceiling. But yeah, with technique, I mean, we had so many amazing presentations. We had uh, Peter himself on the secret power source, hit bigger serves. Um, we had Brady Height uh, uh, from um, Daily Tennis Lesson on how to hit picture perfect volleys, which was really fantastic too. I mean, you know, most of us are playing doubles. You know, all the time we need to know how to hit a, a proper volley. And you've got that with that uh, with Brady's presentation. And then Greg Lasour from Online Tennis Instruction, Forehand Technique Masterclass. He, he really focuses on how to use your kinetic chain so that you can hit a more powerful forehand. I know that's one of my favorite things to do on the course to dictate with my forehand. But I see that a lot of amateur tennis players don't quite know how to get, you know, their whole body synced up so that they can really you know, uh, have power from the ground up and then, you know, put it all into their, their racket essentially. Um, but yeah, Greg does a great job with that one. Um, and we did have a live session with Ryan and he gave us some technique tips as well as some other, you know, strategy and other tips as well. Um, and then we had, um, day, day and day tree, as I mentioned from racket flex, they had the serve biomechanics masterclass. They do such a great job of, breaking down the serve and, and showing you the, the really most, the, you know, the most important aspects of it to, to hit big serves. So always, always uh, love their work. Um, we had Will Hamilton from uh, fuzzy yellow balls to talk about how to generate more spin and power on your strokes with one simple drill. Um, it's really a very important drill too. speaking of the kinetic chain. And he has Dr. Mark Kovacs um, with him on this session to show you, Again, a, a really simple and easy drill to help you generate more power and spin. Uh, we also had a really cool video that we shot with David Bailey at the USTA National Tennis Center. He put me through the ringer with a lot of um, different uh, footwork moves. So if you want to see that, that's a fun one, too. And then Kevin and Megan Garlington on the backhand slice. That was super cool. We actually did this one live. So uh, Kevin and Megan were on the court. I was telling Pete this earlier. And then they went through the lesson, you know, had the ball machine on the court and did it live with every all the viewers. And and then um, we had a lot of great questions there. Um, and then we had an awesome serve analysis um, session with Peter, who I have to thank for for jumping in 
uh, and showing us, you know, a lot of great tips that, you know, I mean, that alone, that session is, is really worth it um, to get the all access pass, in my opinion, because the serve, I mean, it's again, you know, we're serving half the time in singles, one fourth in doubles, or really your team serving half the time. And um, yeah, a lot of great, you know, analysis of different levels of players of their serves and very common, you know, mistakes and things that you can improve upon. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of great sessions. <laughs> okay. The technique. Yeah. Well, very cool. Well, I, I want to show you something here in a second in a, in a sec hopefully we'll, we'll come up, but what I, what I want everybody to understand is lots of times technique seems so unattainable to people to have beautiful, perfect technique. And in a second, I'm going to show you somebody that just was at my camp. Uh, they're back in. They've been playing three and a half years. Keep that in mind when I show you this video. Hopefully the video will show up. They've been playing three and a half years. And I believe that if people are willing to go through the train, anybody can have perfect technique. Let me just show you something. Like one of the things I noticed at my camp, whenever I do my, and, and remember, people who come to my camp, Lots of them have watched the Tennis Summit. Watch the, lots of them have been playing a long time. And lots of them watch online instruction. But what I want to teach you tonight is like, how much are you really watching the online instruction? How much are you really going back to it? How much are you really retaining? That's what we're going to be teaching you tonight and how important that is to make sure you're going through this information the right way. Like, for example, just to get your hand out like this, this already looks like a good tennis player, right? When you see this, this looks like a good tennis player. But yet most people don't. They're, they're here and they're there and they even know, right? They even know to get here. But even after I show them that, like, oh, yeah, I'll beat them the next ball and they're still here. But think about this, guys. Doing this, if, if I said, hey, just reach your arm out straight and don't let there be any bend in the elbow, everybody can pretty much do that. But then when the ball's coming... Then all of a sudden we go back to our old habit. So this doesn't have anything to do with talent. I'm not showing you more talent than you have by doing this. What I'm showing you is more focused training. I, I, I started training, you know, as a young kid that I became a top ranked junior and everything. And I played division one college. So like when I get set, this is what you're going to see. But this doesn't have it. This doesn't mean I'm more talented than you. This just means I've had more training than you on this move. And so I've got it down. So now what I want to show you, and Maribon, let me, let me know if you can see it when I show you. Sure. Uh, can you guys see this, this video? Oops. Yes. Yeah. I, I can see it. Look at that backhand. That's a pretty sweet backhand. Let me show you that again. See that? Can you see it, Maribon? Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit at some point light. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that angle's good. Okay, you gotta read. Okay, yeah. So anyway, and then let's come back both you and I together, Maribon. Yeah. That video I'm showing you. This guy had a perfect looking backhand, a perfect looking forehand, a perfect looking serve, a perfect looking volley, overhead. He had all the fundamentals nailed. And I said, how long have you been playing? He said, three and a half years. Like, wow. he, he was, he was, he's only a three, five because he just started playing. But I mean, he, he see for this guy, the sky is literally the limit, especially he's, you know, especially for uh, recreational players, he's probably like mid forties. So he still has that, you know, time to just keep getting better. And he's, and he's you know, he moves fa fairly well. And everybody else was at the camp was, was good players. You know, they were, they, and they had good skills, but they didn't have near the technique he had. And I said, how many lessons have you taken on the court? And he says, I've only had a couple lessons on the court. I learned all this through watching online instruction. Wow. So obviously because everybody who showed up at the camp, they only came to the camp by knowing me from online instruction. So obviously he's watching and doing a little bit different. He's going about a little bit different than almost probably 80% of the people that I've had come to my camp who have obvious technical flaws that need to be worked out. And 
that's what I want to kind of teach you guys tonight is, well, how can we be more like this guy and less like this person, you know, and this person, right? So I'm going to show you how you can do it, but you've got to kind of, you've got to take ownership of it because when you look at, this guy has watched online instruction. And if we look at Maravon's tennis summit, he took all of the best online instructors together and then packaged that into technique. So in, in, unless, unless I'm missing something, let me know. Do, do you guys think that Maravon delivered at a pretty high level on giving you guys a pretty good technique, technical lessons, they c complete with drills, you know, practice ideas, technical uh, things that you can follow, good, good tips, visual, audio tips. Plus, plus see, you, you guys get audio recordings as well. You even get it written out. So, I mean, no matter what type of learner you are, if you're somebody who learns through seeing, if you're learns, somebody who learns through hearing, if you're learn, somebody who really learns by reading, he's put that all together for you. All right, let me see. Any, what do you guys think? You, somebody says absolutely. Does anybody else agree that Marathon delivered on pillar number one? I want to know. Um, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I think you did. I mean, you, just going Thank through you. it. Absolutely. Uh, let's go to pillar number two. All right. Absolutely. Oh, let's bring it's, back. Yeah. It's been epic. Thank you, Angel. Appreciate that. Let's yeah, see. All right. Says Christine. Awesome. Thank you, Christine. She's been at our camps yes you got really good fitness mental though definitely doctor success i like that definitely that's a great name okay pillar number two okay let me pillar get that to the two. second one yep strategy okay so one of the things that this guy doesn't have mastered yet that i just showed you his back end is the strategy uh because um, when he, we, we had other three, five and four oh players. And even though he was the best by far, technically, he wasn't the best player by far. It was very, very competitive. I, I, he certainly wasn't the war. I mean, some, it was, it was kind of like, it was a great camp because, you know, he won a lot of games and then we had two ladies and they, they won a lot of games and there was another guy and, and he, so it was like a very even camp, even though he was like light years ahead, in my opinion, technically, uh, competitive wise, um, you know, it was, it was pretty even because he, you know, he doesn't really know how to use all his tools. In fact, that was one of the things he said, he said, I want to uh, get out of this camp. When he came to my camp, he's like, I want to know, you know, what I'm doing wrong as far as like when I miss a shot and then also like shot selection and things like that. And especially when we're playing doubles games, you know, sometimes he would hit a really good shot. It was technically really looking nice. The swing looked really good. It had nice power on it, but it went to the wrong spot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he didn't quite know uh, where to hit every shot, you know, depending on what spot he was in. So strategy is another big pillar that it's just not about, you know, how good are you hitting the ball, but where are you hitting the ball? And, you know, when are you hitting the ball there? So what did you have? this year, Maribon, the way of strategy when it comes to fulfilling pillar number two. Yeah. Strategy was um, a lot of great sessions, obviously. I mean, we had um, Louis Kaye who has coached um, eight <laughs> number one ranked double specialists and 26 players who reached the ATP top 50. So that's like really crazy. And I remember having him or talking to him once and he said, you know, I, I charge, you know, thousands, um, normally for talks, but I, I, you know, I, I really like what you're doing and I like you a lot. And, and so, you know, I'm not going to do that to you. So I said, Oh, thank you, Louis. But, um, yeah, so he, he had one on how to implement winning tactics in your matches really just, I mean, amazing stuff, you know, had a lot of great clips as well to accentuate his points. Um, you know, really nice presentation. Then we had Jonathan Stokey um, on the top five singles drills to win more matches. So if you just if you're the type that you want to know the drills, you want to implement, you want to do them on the court, which I think is most of us, uh, then that's a great one. We had Mark Sofalis on how to use data to win more tennis matches. So um, that was a great one. He you know revealed the most important data that he's found um, to help you with your strategy. So you know I I've had people who request you know 
like evidence and and research and data for the strategy that they're implementing. So this is a great one there. And um, then we had Will Buchek, uh, who has a great uh, podcast called the Doubles Only Tennis Podcast, and he gave us the the most powerful doubles tactics for club level players. So that's a really great one too. He's a you know doubles expert. Um, uh, Will is, and then we had Brent Abel on a really fun live session where he educated us on you know just double strategy and and how to approach um the game from you know to play play solid and and also kind of also visually as well and 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 targets to aim for which were very very helpful and kind of changes your perspective on you know just how to play generally um for a lot of us um and then we had Hori Capistani on the most effective doubles pressure games. Now, this session I loved so much because, I mean, first off, as you can tell from, from the title, Jorge goes through with his students and his wife, actually, which is really cool, um, all, a bunch of doubles pressure games. But he then provides you with this double with this sheet, a one-page PDF that you can take with you on the court. So we have the PDF linked inside the members area. And then you just you know, print it out and then you have a checklist, you know, you do the drill and you, you can write down who won the drill. And with these doubles games, it's so awesome because you only need two people. It's only, you only need to get one other person to to do all these drills. And, you know, it's not where you need four people on the court. You only need two. And a lot of times we can't get four people to, to practice together. So that's awesome. And then Faisal Hassan, uh, how to develop anticipation skills when serving and returning. So, Anticipation skills, one of the most, you know, asked about skills that we need. I think there was a comment about it, too, uh, today and in the chat. And so um, a lot of us have trouble anticipating. So uh, Faisal gives through a really great framework for us on how to anticipate based on, you know, a lot of different cues, um, you know, where the ball is and also, you know, where you want to hit the ball to in, either to ensure that you don't get a, a ball that's crushed back at you. So love this um, session with Faisal, a great presentation. And then we had Scott Baxter on the top three winning double strategies uh, with, with his uh, partner in crime, Nate Bowling. Um, so that you definitely want to check that one out. And then Edgar Giffenig on uh, how to improve what really matters in your game. Edgar is such a great coach and he goes through this. So you definitely don't want to miss that one. And then Ian Westerman from, um, <laughs> Sorry, from Essential Tennis, who we just had on the in the chat, he might still be here. Um, he 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 has some of the best instruction on the web, and um, he reveals his top ten ways to win more doubles strategy or more doubles matches with his strategies. So um, definitely, that's that was a very popular live stream. He always does a great job on the live streams for us. Um, so uh, really enjoyed that one. As well, so yeah, um, chock full of strategy for any singles or doubles players. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's, uh, that's <laughs> both. So just you going through that is like incredible, and he had to go through it so quick. But the people that he was met, you know, Faisal Hassan, Jorge Capse, they're both super master professionals. And just so you guys know, like these are coaches that got flown all over the country. You know, and, and they are coaching coaches how to learn this stuff and how to use this stuff at their academies and their clubs. And and you guys have now have access to this. I don't know if you guys understand how powerful that is. You know, this stuff yeah. is as valuable as you make it because it is there. The work is done. It is there for you. It's handed to you on a silver platter. Um, another one he mentioned was Brett. Brent Abel, Brent Abel has the last count. He had 11 or 12 gold balls that I know about 14. Now he has 14 <laughs> gold balls. That means a Crazy. national championship 14 times. And then you have a coach in Louis Kaye who's, who's uh, coached pro pros all over the world who've won major championships. And this yeah. is all there just on strategy, just on yeah. strategy. Yeah. Yeah. I can't so, tell you how, how excited I am to implement this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing too, that I love about doing the tennis summit and tennis con is I always will hear something and go, wow, that is really good. I've never thought about it like that. 
And then I, I go, I have to use that in my coaching because that is just so good. You know, like every time I go through one of these experiences, I grow. When we did Tennis Con Live and we were on the court. We had Ryan there and you there and Kevin. And I got to really just hear everybody go through their stuff. I mean, it was just so inspirational. It was just so awesome. Okay, so that's pillar number two. Did Maribon deliver with everything he just went through? Did he deliver for you on pillar number two when it comes to mastering tennis? Would you say that that lineup they just went through, is that enough information to go through? And, and here's another thing. It's, it's all about how serious a player you want to be, how much you want to get out of your game. I, I was at um, a Brian Brothers camp with Gigi Fernandez uh, over a month ago. And they talked about Novak Djokovic and how he pays top dollar for data. We're talking just oodles of money. I don't even know how much money it is, but when the Bryan brothers say he play, pays boatloads of money for data, then you know it's probably boatloads of money because they're all, you know, all the pros who have success on the tour and they want to keep getting better, they, they, they don't, you know, skimp on knowledge. They'll, they'll pay a lot of money for a great physio trainer and a great tactician and a uh, technical coach. It's so specialized a sport. And they say that Novak pays a boatload of money just so he knows more about every single player than anybody else. And, and so if, if somebody that smart knows the game that much still goes, I need to learn more about this game so I can have an advantage over everybody out there. That says a lot about how much you can keep learning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what are people saying? Uh, let's see. Yeah, awesome information. Thank you for another great summit from Deborah. I love to see that. Um, Jane says yes. Angel, hundred um, percent. Mahaney, need all the information. <laughs> He's actually one of my uh, good friends, so <laughs> likes to give okay. me a hard cool. time. But uh, yeah, hey Mike. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I definitely am glad to hear that. And yeah, again, you know, like I. You know, I'm, I'm going to bring that sheet from Jorge the next time I go out there. I'm going to be remembering, you know, the concepts and the visualizations from Faisal's presentations. Like, it's just really great stuff. So, you know, I always encourage you to, you know, go to these presentations and figure out what is the most pertinent to your game and then focus on that until you nail it. So, yeah. So, yeah. Put, put go ahead, Mark Pete. comments up. Put, put, put Mark's comment up. Yeah. Look at that. Nice. That's the thing. I mean, the people who are implementing this stuff, and, and, and I love you guys, but, but a lot of you are not implementing the stuff that even though you are, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how you can have done a pretty good job. What I'm going to show you here in a couple of minutes is how you can have done a pretty good job watching the Tennis Summit this year and think that you got a lot out of it and you did get a lot out of it short term but you're leaving so much off the table if you just stop right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how how that happens, how you can think, oh, I, I, I was pretty, I was pretty active in tennis summit this year. I think I got all I could get out of it. And then I'm going to show you how well you, you probably still could get so much more. Um, and it, it, it really does show to me when people come, cause I have so many people come visit me and I know that the only way they visit me is by watching me online and we will do so many drills and there's, there are drills that I've done a, a ton of times online. And then when we do them together, I'll say, now, when's the last time you've practiced like that? And they say to me, never, I've never mm. done that. So mm. there's a disconnect going on. I just want to make you guys aware of that. All right. Uh, pillar number three. What is pillar number three? That Djokovic. Mental. Yep. And this, this right here is one of the biggest ones. Is that, really is. and I love that picture I found Novak pointing to his head because Novak's a perfect example. He was third fiddle for years. Roger and Rafa had a huge head start in the arms race for the most Grand Slam titles over Novak. And Novak said, you know what? The difference between me starting to win on a consistent basis against the best players in the world and where I was losing towards the other tournaments was I finally believed I could win. Mm -hmm. Now, 
it's a simple concept, but it wasn't as simple as Novak waking up one morning and going, oh, now I believe I could win. Why didn't I think that? Why didn't I think that last <laughs> year? No, it was that he kept working on his mind. I mean, no one works, whether you love Novak or not, no one's worked harder on this on his game than him. I mean, he is constantly growing and looking for information. And I and it comes to where you keep doing this mental work. I mean, I heard even things like he would even eat in silence in the dark. That's how willing he was willing to go wow. to work on his mind. And and so you've got to work on your mind too. And and there's and you want to hear as much as you can and then put the pieces together that work for you. Because when it comes to mental, I don't think there's a one size fits all. You just keep picking from this person and that person and things start to make more sense to you and you start to develop more confidence in, in your, in your um, method. Like even Rublev, who um, won the tournament last week, he said, you know, I really was excited that I did so on this tournament because I was nervous on how I was going to do because I started to feel that I finally am putting the right pieces together. I feel that my training – I feel that we're working on the right things. I feel that I have the formula now. And so it's great to get that vindication that what I thought I, where I was at, I'm at, I'm there. And, and this is a guy that's, you know, again, been near the top for so long, but has seemed to always fall in the, in the quarterfinals of tournaments so many times, or even sometimes early round exits. And if you watch them this year, this dude is winning a lot of matches. And so now he's finally, after doing all this work, is starting to figure out how to put the pieces together. A lot of times those pieces are up here. So what do you have for people in the mental department when it comes to pillar number three? Sure. Yeah, definitely let you know. And just before, you know, before I, you know, let you know about all the great sessions, I mean, it, you know, an astounding stat that like we don't really realize most of us is, and, you know, this obviously varies a little bit, but depending on and you, but s around 78% of the time uh, of, you, of you playing the match is, is not actually you playing. You know, it's spent um, in between points on the changeover, you know, breaks and whatnot. So, I mean, you, you have to spend that time, you know, in the mental department, obviously, you know, strategy too, but, it, you know, working with your mind, figuring out, you know, how can I refocus because I'm, I feel distracted. Like, okay, I've lost um, a few points in a row. How can I calm myself down and be emotionally stable and things like that? So um, mental game is just uh, unbelievably important and, and you need all the pillars like, like Pete says, but I mean, you know, these sessions were just full of rock stars. I mean, we had how to achieve optimal performance and decrease stress with Jeff Salzenstein, uh, who broke the top 100 in the world for the first time at the age of 30, which I think is a record. Um, he was also 69 in doubles on the ATP tour. And, you know, as he does great stuff at Tennis Evolution. And then we had Rick Macy uh, on Grand Slam Habits and Training Secrets and, and the winning mentality. Um, he's obviously a legend. Um, you know, uh, Venus and Serena Williams coached them along with so many others, Roddick, Sharapova, et cetera. And then uh, we had... Uh, Emma Doyle on how to practice with pressure and enhance your training environment. So obviously super important, you know, we get the biggest, one of the biggest questions we get is, Oh, how come I can't play well in matches like I do in practice? And, you know, the key to, to doing that um, is to introduce pressure in your practices. So Emma goes through exactly how to do that. A, a ton of great strategies um, on, on that method. And then we have um, Larry Lauer from uh, USTA uh, player development on a three-step process to play clutch during big points. So you definitely want to tune into this one and learn, you know, this this really succinct uh, process that is going to really uh, change the way you you approach matches and really powerful stuff. And then we had, um, you know, one of my favorites of all time, besides Peter, of course, Paul Anacone. And it was very special because... I mean, yeah, as you know, I mean, he wasn't only number 12 in the world in, in singles. Um, you know, he won the 85 doubles title in Australia, but then he obviously also coached Roger Federer, Pete Sampras, Sloan Stevens, like Tim Henman. Uh, he, he also um, uh, uh, trains um, Taylor Fritz right now, which is unbelievable. Um, and so for the first time with P with Paul, we actually had him on uh, live on the summit, which was super cool. 
so he was able to answer everybody's questions, had him on for about like 45 minutes or so. Uh, really fun and special uh, session. And he's such a nice guy. He's, he's one of the best um, for sure. And then we had Jeff Greenwald from Fearless Tennis, who was at TennisCon Live. And he talked about how to play looser and more fearless tennis. So, um, I mean, a lot of great strategies in there. I mean, obviously, you know, we get tight during matches. It's very normal. We have to accept it. But then we have to have strategies in place to go to um, when these things happen to us. Um, you know, the, one of the things he talks about is like the dials and, and how to recognize like how tense you are and, and, you know, be able to control that. But yeah, that's that's such a great one. And then we had Jorge Capistani on uh, a live session where he talks about um, mental game tactics. And so um, another special session there. So yeah, you've got seven awesome sessions on the mental game that can just change your outlook and, and you know, how you approach the game from, from the 78% of the time that you're not playing. Uh, so really, really powerful sessions. Uh, yeah. If you could put Frank's question there, Frank Long, he has a good question. I want to answer it. Uh, yeah, sure. Mar Let me Maribon find. Oh. And Pete. Okay. Yeah. So, got it. So he said, if you could name one coach who's been the most influenced on your tennis career, who would it be? Now, here, here's the thing. I, uh, as a junior, I would say probably this one coach, Mike Caputo, because he was great with technique, mm. but he also uh, would just played so many different mind games with you. He used to feed me out of a big shopping cart and, you know, he'd just be ball after ball and he'd tell you like, okay, five more. And then you'd hit five more. And all of a sudden you were, you're about to die and you realize, oh, I just hit another 20, 30 more. And, you know, like, so I just never knew what practice could going to be like. So I felt very strong mentally when I was working with him. But as far as, especially we're talking about my tennis career or just how I feel like I wear, I've learned the most. And this is, this is no joke. I wish I had all this information when I was a junior, you know, this stuff does was yeah. not, I mean, the, the internet is just so amazing that we can put all this stuff together. And when it comes to like just tennis knowledge and what I, it's really from working with all the people in these summits that we do and, and hearing everybody's different thoughts on things. Um, I mean, it's just been amazing. And that has been the biggest thing. I can't name one coach because everybody just has all these golden nuggets and I just keep picking them up and using them. And sometimes I forget them and I review them again. Like one of my favorite interviews I ever did was with John Newcomb. And mm. I mean, he just has so many things that I remember the, uh, the week or the month after I came back, I was like almost just exclusively using all his tips to my students because they were just so applicable. So, I mean, this is really where I've had the best influence on coaching information, working with all these people by far. It's not even close. Yeah, yeah. That's a great answer, Peter. I mean, same here. If you want to get technical and talk about my tennis career, it would probably be my college tennis coach um, at University of Maryland, Baltimore County, which uh, he's now at the Naval Academy coaching the women's team. But, you know, I always remember a couple of things that he said to me. One was, you know, when you're struggling, just go back to the basics, um, basic patterns of play. And then the second one was uh, focus on the process, not the results. Because I yeah. remember my very first college tennis match, I was up on actually a friend who also also played in the mid-Atlantic section with me. Uh, up like six two five one, and then th my thought in my head was, "Oh, I can't wait to win my first college match," and then I lost. And then, um, yeah, so he he talked to me and kind of you know settled me down and gave me that advice. So, but yeah, there's been so many like incredible tips that I've that have really improved my game from all these coaches. Like it's really, yeah, it's incredible. So I just really thankful to all the coaches. But yeah, a really great question. Yeah. All right, let's go to pillar number four. All right. Fitness. And I, it, it, was this guy in your tennis summit this year? Yes, he was. Well, <laughs> so Nathan I was. Found, yep. I looked up mm -hmm. tennis fitness, guys, and I came up with this image. Um, and there it is. There's Nathan working with Leighton Hewitt, and his wife is working with Martina Navratilova. This, this is the kind of information that you have access to. And the fitness, the last room mentioned, but certainly not the least. 
and it is just so important in so many fitness covers so many things first of all footwork you know whenever i run a camp i say okay are you guys ready i always do it as a test and unfortunately and maribon i do want you to bring me up solo because this is not an exaggeration okay whenever i run a camp so if you ever come to one of my camps know that this is not what what not to do i will say are you ready and i'm telling you 90 percent of the time they go yes i'm ready i go you're ready to play yes and what i'm trying to get them to see is you know footwork being able to you should get on on your toes and then also split step you know so on your toes split step and split step right before the ball is fed, get that split step. And just by getting people to do that, now you can take me away. Um, just by getting ready to do that, everybody, when I get them to do that, they instantly look better because I have them watch their videos and I show them them not moving their feet and I show what they look like when they move their feet and they automatically look better. But a lot of people just even can only move their feet and they're, they can't time their split step and they don't have all the footwork patterns down. And a lot of people think of footwork as just move. But footwork in tennis is very specific. Like, one thing that's kind of interesting about me is I've watched myself on video lately. I still have excellent footwork. But I don't have, but I probably lost about seven steps of speed, you know. So footwork doesn't equal foot speed. But in the summit, you get, you know, how to learn these footwork steps. You also learn, though, how to become more explosive. You also yeah. learn how to increase your stamina. You also yeah. learn on how to avoid injuries. And that's kind of mm -hmm. important as we age, you know, like in the next week or so, I I'm going to get an ablation on my back to hopefully get some back relief. So I mean, I understand what it's like to be in pain and on the court. And, and it's very, very limiting. You know, I don't wish it on anybody. So this information I mean, it's so valuable to take these fit. I mean, you got Mark Kovacs, who is not only working with the best American tennis players, but he's working with the best basketball players in the world, the best track stars yeah. in the world, the best football players in the world. And it's, that's just one presentation. So yeah. who else was part of the fitness program? Yeah, um, the fitness program uh, section of it was like just jam packed. Um, we had actually 10, <laughs> 10 fitness sessions, tried to cover everything for you. It was insane. I mean, first off, um, amazing session with Dr. Mark Kovacs, like you said, on the most important misconceptions around tennis fitness. So you'll likely have at least one of these, if not several. Um, and he tackles them and shows you, he give, gives you data. You know, he's showing like heart rate data and the proper way you really should be training for for tennis endurance and, and power and, and all aspects. So really amazing stuff. Then we have um, Satoshi Ochi, who is the uh, who manages the strength and conditioning um, and athletic training staff at the USD player development, um, you know, uh, that program in, in Orlando. And he, he shows you ground based training progressions and variations. So very important. You know, we talk about the kinetic chain, you know, power from the ground up so this is a perfect session for that. And then, as you mentioned, and as we have on the screen or we had on the screen, Nathan Martin on court movement fundamentals. So he shows you a basic progression to improve your footwork. So definitely can't miss there. Um, he does great work, as we mentioned. And then Dean Hollingworth, a um, uh, great tennis fitness trainer, has been on many years of my summits uh, on how to improve your on court performance, your movement, stability and swing power. So he's, he goes on court with a, a great junior student of his and and she demonstrates and obviously he shows you, you know, which drills you need to be doing to improve those aspects. So great stuff there. Then Dominic King uh, shows you the strength and conditioning interventions for the movement cycle. For So basically, you know, there's very many different aspects of, of movement when if you break it down and and um, Dominic shows you, you know, strength and conditioning exercises for all those different um you know, phases of movement. And then Justin Russ, um, he gives us uh, a simple and effective dynamic warm up routine. So, one of the most important things, actually, one of the game changers for me, to be honest, because I was the type that always, you know, just rush on the court at, at the last minute. But 
ever since I've been, uh, you know, introducing a dynamic warm up routine, my muscles have been primed and ready to play. So definitely can't discount that because if you are not, you know, warmed up properly, you haven't re reached a certain body temperature, then you're just going to be more likely than not struggling in your matches. Uh, and then you, you go to late start, you know, three, four, zero down first it's over. I mean, it's, it's a big waste for sure. So that's a nice one to, uh, to emulate after you watch it. Then we had Tara Collingwood. Um, uh, this is actually an encore presentation, this one, but on how to structure your diet for, for peak performance. So for those of you who, you know, want some uh, more knowledge about how to structure your diet um, properly so that you can perform the best that you can on the court. Um, and believe me, you know, these tweaks that, that, that she talks about are really powerful. And then we had had Sherry Co for a live yoga session. So this was awesome. Blew her up full screen. Had her do a yoga. I mean, <laughs> Peter's laughing because in Tampa, both of us did a uh, a, a couple of yoga sessions with Robbie down there, but as part yeah. of Tennis Con Live. It was not easy. So I tell you, Sherry's session is a lot more uh, simple and easy to start, even if you've never done yoga before. So that's the beauty of it. So you can, and, and it still works really well, you know, no matter what level you are, um, can help a lot. It's, as you know, and as we, as we talk about mobility, flexibility decreases as you age, you need to work on it more and more as you yeah. age. So this is a great one, um, to help, help with your health. Uh, Emma Green, uh, another great live session on tennis elbow. So how shoulder weakness can contribute to that. And, um, if you've ever suffered with tennis elbow, um, again, you know, she, she'll break down myths similar to, uh, Dr. Kovacs, session, you know, there are some myths that we have about tennis elbow and also golfer's elbow. And, and she shows us the exercises that you can do to, um, to work on that, to improve it or to, uh, to uh, make sure that you prevent it. So really great session for that. Um, and then we did a live workout as well with Dean Hollingworth and that was super fun. I actually did not partake this time. Um, instead I blew him up full screen and then he demonstrated the exercise, went through it and then also, you know, talk, talks you through the technique. And then besides that, we also had a really fun, um, live session with Richard Gronewald on, um, how to choose the right rackets and strings for you too. So there's a lot of different traits that you should be looking for relative to your strings and also rackets. So that's, that's, that's one in there. I always put that in there for you. Uh, tech tech heads, I guess, if you will. So yeah, I think I was talking for a long time there, Peter, but I mean, that's a lot of really good stuff in there. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is every time you mention a day, you do talk for a long time because there's a lot of stuff you, you put into the summit. Like, yeah. I say, Hey, what was on? The, I mean, each pillar, you 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 taken the best instructors on the planet and and it takes you a while to explain everything they went through so that's that's how much is at your fingertips and i want to commend a lot of people on tonight's live stream because i've seen you've been on almost every single one of my live streams during the tennis summit when i've come on and i imagine you probably also you know you're probably one of the better students here you're probably tuned in to a lot of the other people too and you probably have gotten a lot out of the tennis summit and and you might have think you know well i don't know if i really need the lifetime access pass i think i'm good i pretty much did a good job you know studying everything this week i think i'm good now i think i'm good for a while i think you got a very inspired um but i don't think there's any way with everything that maribond's gone through and every single uh, every single day that there, that you can retain and really put into good practice uh, I just don't think it's possible with watching the free sessions. And, and, and I'm just going to come right out and say it. When, when I do tennis con, yes, I say it's free. And I do want you to enjoy it. But I, I view my tennis con, I don't know if Maribond views it the same way that I do, and, and I'm not trying to put words in his mouth. But the way I view it is I'm like, I'm like the guy in the mall saying, hey, try this piece of chicken before you buy it. It's pretty good. And I'm going to give you this piece of chicken for free and you go, wow, that was really good. Then, you know, hopefully you'll, you're going to buy it because you're going to go, this is really good. I, I want to have this for lunch. And, and that's why I, I make it because as a coach, I don't think that I can give you something for free for a week and that you, okay, you've got it now. Congratulations. That's not the way that learning really works. I'm going to show you how learning really works right now 
So for the people that really want to get the most out of the tennis summit, this is how you do it. Um, so Mirabon, if, uh, if you could get the video about the forgetting curve ready and I'll kind of cue it up. Sure. Mm -hmm. So there was this guy and I might not remember everything because I forget, <laughs> right? That's the whole point of the forgetting curve. But there was this German guy, uh, Herman Ebbinghaus, and I think it was either 1845 or 1855. Again, I forget. And he started to do these studies on, you know, learning and how you can remember stuff and retain stuff. And he basically found that when you first learn something and you do a job, you feel like right there that you can retain 100% of it. And, you, and for that day, right? And that's how we fool ourselves. For that day, you do remember a lot of it. You're like, yes, I had a great day. I learned this today. I learned this today. I'm never going to forget it. But it shows within a day how much the chart falls. And then within a week, how much the chart falls. And then within a month and then a year. And basically after a year, you basically don't remember anything on stuff you thought that you would never forget. So yeah. can you can you show us that video? Sure. You want me to full screen it? Yeah. Okay. All right. And let All right. me know whether you hear it. The curve of forgetting. The curve of forgetting shows us how our memory works over time. This blue line represents your memory with no review sessions. On day one, you attend lecture and pay attention, and you walk out knowing 100% of the new information you learned. On day two, the blue line drops, representing the fact that if you don't use that information again, you lose 50 to 80% of the material you learned. Our brains don't retain information unless we use it on a regular basis. And you can see that by day 30, we recall only traces of that original lecture. Let's say you have a midterm on day 40. You'll have to relearn all the material from the lecture and subsequent ones. This can result in a feeling of panic before exams, and last-minute cramming combined with panic will give you less than stellar results on that exam. But you can change the pattern. The yellow line indicates what your memory would look like with regular review over the course of the term. On day 30, you'll retain the information you need to do well on that exam, and as an added benefit, you'll understand it even better. When you're exposed to the same information over and over, it becomes easier for you to retrieve that information from your memory. As you can see, if you review on a regular basis, you can reactivate the material with just 10 minutes of review after one day, five minutes after one week, and two to four minutes after one month. Every time you review, you become more and more familiar with the material, so it takes less time to review it the next time. Compare those few minutes spread out over time with the hour you would need to spend relearning material at the end of the semester. Reviewing over the course of the term will ultimately save you time and help you learn and understand material better than ever. Okay. All right. So you guys can Good see video. that's an academic piece of material, but it definitely translates to tennis. And as he said, cramming, I feel that as tennis players, a lot of times we, we, we are crammers, right? We, we, there's even a woman here in my complex who loves tennis and she loves online instruction. But when I talk to her, she always kind of seems almost stressed about tennis because she always seems kind of in a panic about it going, Oh yeah, I watched your summit. I, I just have to, I, I have courses, but I, I never really go through them. You know, I, and I just always kind of calm her down and say, it's okay. You know, I know life is busy and you know, don't worry about it. Don't stress yourself on it. But I also know that feeling as not only a student in school, but as a tennis player, like when I am most prepared, when I've been consistently doing the drills, when I'm in really good shape, when I'm meticulous with my practice, when I feel like I'm learning new techniques and finally getting them, my confidence level is at an all time high when I go to the court. Mm -hmm. When I feel like, man, I'm, 
I got a tournament, but I really don't feel ready. You know, I, the, I feel a little rusty. You know, you know if you've been doing the work or not. And what I loved about that video we just watched is you see that you could, you could hear everything in the, and you might go, well, you know, I watched Tennis Summit this week, but I don't, I'm not going to do Lifetime because I don't, I don't have time to go back and watch that again. But you can see that if you don't go back and watch it again, you are go. that is not just me making stuff up. That, you can find video after video of all these studies and these academic institutions talking about spaced repetition learning and how valuable it is and how that when you do it, you don't have to overwhelm yourself. You don't have to, the more you do it over time, the less you have to yeah. do it. You don't have to, you know, watch the time. tennis stuff. Yeah. yeah, watch everything. You can watch a couple of minutes of a certain thing you're trying to get, and then you can go out and do the drills or whatever, which, you, you know, that's another part. You're going to have to not just watch the videos, but you have to watch the video and go, okay, now I got to go to the court and do that. That's, that's the next level of what, what you have to do with the tennis summit to really get everything out of it. And when I do a lot of my coaching and I really mean this, and I don't know if people think it's just like a sales gimmick is I say, look, you know, with the drills I'm showing you, you don't need to go out and practice for hours and hours. You just take these drills and you do them five, 10, 15 minutes before your match or five, 10, 15 minutes after your match. And if you do it on a regular basis, I, I guarantee you're going to get this thing that you haven't gotten in your entire life. But unfortunately, we, we feel overwhelmed and we feel like, no, he's just saying that. Like, and I don't have, really have the time. To, like, you don't believe that's actually going to work. But studies show that it actually works. It works. And um, before I open up for Maribon and for you guys' questions, I want to play one more video that's very inspirational and this guy is 92 years old and he just wrote a book called, if you don't use it, you lose it. So that's the thing. I mean, this guy has so much knowledge and is performing at such a high level at 92 years old. And, and this video was so inspirational to me. And, and just that simple line, if you don't use it, you lose it. And when, it, and, and, and when it comes from somebody who's obviously practicing what they're preaching, it, it really hits you a lot more. Like, oh, yeah, like he's not just saying if you don't use it, you lose. he's actually using it, and he's not losing it. So this is a guy, uh, Lou Hollander, and if, if Maribon has the video ready, we'll watch it. it. It blew me away. Sure. Do you want me to play the, the whole thing or stop at any point? I or? think the whole thing. Okay. It's unbelievable, gotcha. guys. Enjoy this. All right. Here we go. Old people are warehoused? Well, I don't want to be warehoused. If I can run 100 miles in one day, I can do anything. Born on June 6, 1930, Lou Hollander defies the stereotypes of an average senior citizen. As an accomplished scientist and physicist, he could have easily opted for a quiet, comfortable retirement. However, Lou uncovered a newfound enthusiasm for fitness that would change his life and set him on an extraordinary path. At the age of 55, Lou said it's never too late to be healthy and competed in the grueling Western States 100-mile foot race in the High Sierras. This experience ignited his passion and led to over two decades of international triathlon competition. At the age of 82, he took on the extreme test of human endurance, the Ironman Triathlon, covering an insane 140 miles of swimming, cycling, and running. And he didn't just finish it, he conquered it, securing his place in the Guinness Book of World Records as the oldest person in the world to complete the strenuous race. And he hasn't stopped since. With thousands of triathlons under his belt, together with 70 Ironman distance races, Lou is a living legend in the world of endurance sports. He's also a champion long distance horse racer with a list of awards that would make any athlete jealous. He's won the Ochoco 150-mile race and been awarded the Hall of Fame for the American Endurance Ride Conference. Lou is also an enthusiastic mentor 
sharing his wealth of knowledge and experience with young athletes and ambitious triathletes. At an age when most people are satisfied with merely taking it easy, he continues to push the boundaries and encourage us all to never give up on our dreams. But what's truly remarkable about Lou is his modest attitude. He looks around at others and wonders why they can't do what he does, never once taking his own extraordinary accomplishments for granted. He's become the face of the senior health movement, an inspiration to all those who believe that age is just a number. In an interview, the scientist said, you were designed to die at 35 or 40. Your pituitary slows down hormone production. You stop repairing. You stop replicating cells. You get old and you die, okay? That's the plan. And we don't like that plan. According to Lou Hollander, your habits and routine at 40 determine what you can do at 80. While death is unavoidable, you have control over the quality and length of your life. In fact, in his 90-odd years, he firmly believes that his best years are still ahead of him and sets his sights on living to be 120. And in his words, if you want to be 120, you've got to get your ass up and go. It's that simple. Lou Hollander swears by particular principles for his longevity and success. Every day, Lou participates in anaerobic exercises as a vital and key part of his training regimen. He says, you do it every day until you can't breathe. You run as hard as you can. The next time, run a little farther until you clear your anaerobic threshold. Look at me, no pain. Every morning I jump out of bed with no joint pain, none. You know why? I run up this hill every day with this beautiful lady, Hollander said, while pointing to the steep ridgeline next to his property with one arm and wrapping the other around his wife. He also highlights the significance of eating a healthy diet with fruits, vegetables, and supplements and setting attainable goals. He says, you are what you eat. Nutrition in the wide sense is what keeps us alive. I won't touch anything I can't recognize. Lou also instructs keeping a check on calorie consumption to stay fit and trim. Lou's greatest and ultimate judge is the mirror. If he gives it his all and can look at himself with satisfaction, he knows he's on the right track. There's no space for giving up when you have to face the mirror every day. Here is his confession. Persistence is key to my life. You fall down, you get back up, and you go again. I don't give up. That's been my motto in business and science. I've never been really good at anything. I just stay with it. As Lou approaches 93, he still feels good, and that's what he's most proud of. This summer, he'll be racing across Oregon, taking on 5Ks and sprint marathons with the same determination and enthusiasm that he brings to every challenge. So there you have it, folks. Lou Hollander's secrets to youth and longevity. Go hard, keep pushing, and who knows, maybe one day you'll run a triathlon too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Hi. I mean, <laughs> that, that, I could watch that. I, I, I could watch that a hundred times. I mean, that, that just gets me so inspired. Yeah. And I love how he said, this is a guy who's obviously doing extraordinary things that if you're 18 and did them, the whole town would be talking about you, right? If you're 18 and you're running a hundred miles, you'd probably be noticed in your town. Like that dude can go a hundred miles. This guy's in his nineties and he says, I'm really not good at anything. My greatest talent is I'm persistent and I never give up. When I fall down, I get back up. I mean, and if that's not a great lesson for tennis players, because we get knocked down a lot as tennis players, we, it, you know, as tennis players, you know, we get humbled very often by the okay. way the ball treats us. And I think another thing though, that is, and, and you even hear all the great tennis players, like when they're talking about their themselves or like, if I'm given a hundred percent effort, I can look myself in the mirror. Like that's the secret. That's what he says. Like if I'm 
putting everything into it and I know that I can live with the results. And I think that's what allows so many people of greatness to perform at a high level is they know that they did all the work and they have confidence in that work and they trust that work. Where mm -hmm. a lot of us that do a lot of the work, but know there's a lot we're not doing. For example, tuning in to the tennis summit, and that's a lot of work. It's I'm not saying you guys didn't do a lot of work, but then they go, oh, well, it was fun to get the free pass and I can't wait to watch it next year and have a good time. You see, as opposed to going, wow, I have like the greatest coaches right here and if I go to work on it and I really go through the things I want to get, I can achieve a, a very high level of success. And I already showed you guys earlier tonight that this, this is true. I, sh I showed you guys that video of that guy hitting the backhands who had the best technique and he had just been playing tennis for three and a half years, but he's obviously watching and doing the stuff online different than most people because most people who watch online instruction don't look like this guy. And I think the difference is, is he's kind of got a mindset similar yeah. to, to Lou. Um, and, and so if you really want to get the most out of the tennis summit, I definitely highly recommend, and it's Marabon summit, not mine, <laughs> that you get the lifetime access pass for the, all the reasons I've stated tonight. Uh, so Maribon, maybe we want to go through some comments and questions and then show everybody that since this is the last night, how they can, how they can, you know, go through this and start to work on the four pillars after this session is retired. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And, um, some really good comments. I got Mark here. It says no way to remember it all. Membership is a must. Yeah. hundred percent agree with that. As we've been talking about, um, Dr. Tom Nordstrom, example of my lifetime pass use. I saw Faisal Hassan about serve tracking as receiver and server. Our last targets. I remembered he did a session a few years ago on tracking groundies. I found it. There you go. I mean, that's the thing, you know, it's, it's sometimes you, you might learn a great concept and you might even, you know, try it out on the court, but then, uh, ideally you want that, like, to be able to refer to it back over and over again, as we talked about, you know, with that first video that we saw. Um, so good job, uh, Tom, um, Dr. Tom. Um, let's see what else. Um, Colin C said, make notes. It's a lot of note taking, but <laughs> yes, I mean, taking notes is good. Um, let's see what else. Um, I would say that equipment knowledge to tailor to your game is a pillar by itself. Hmm. What do you think about that? I think, I, well, what I think is equipment is very important more than ever today. Um, so, yeah. I mean, strengths can make a big difference. And so really learning, it is important. I wouldn't call it like a pillar, you know, uh, but it's important to know, okay, what kind of racket should I be using so I don't get hurt, number one? What, what kind of racket uh, really supports my style of play? What kind of strings yes. support my style of play? what kind of tension supports my style of play. That is all very important. And then, you know, when you take a look at equipment, you know, there's exercise equipment, there's things you put in your bag. I mean, all that supports the pillars, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Oh, Glenn had a question. I missed the yoga um, and avoid injury session. Good information. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously I am the host of the summit, but I would say the yoga session was really fantastic. And again, you know, it was at a level that everybody could do and, you know, uh, Sherry, Sherry's awesome. Like she's actually made a yoga, you know, program with, with Ian at essential tennis. So, you know, I try to get the best experts I can find. So she's fantastic. And then, you know, yeah, the fitness sessions, I mean, to help you get stronger and avoid injury. Um, like I said, there's like 10 of them. So, um, really good stuff from the best in the business. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. Um, Tom, the key is avoid injury. Don't end up on my OR table. True. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tom sessions were above. That's good. I assume above average. Um, James, great answer. It's sad to hear many all coaches trash all the old coaches. Yeah, you know, we've got to have positivity and, and recognize when um, you know, the when a coach gives you great information or when maybe what they give you might not be and, and so forth. But a lot of great live coaches and you know, so many several of these coaches that are primarily live, you know, like Paul Anico and Rick Macy and so forth, but we try to get them online too. Um, 
Frank Long, focus on the process, not the result. Great look. I wish I was there at uh wish I wish there was a tennis con or a tennis summit when I was in my twenties, the wood rack. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like we were saying earlier, it would oh, man, I, I really am sad to think about like how much better uh you know we would have been if we had this stuff, but you know, time change. UBC graduate, go dogs. Um okay, Mark. There is so much information out there. Is it best to focus on one pillar at a time when working on the different areas? Yeah, I think I think a great thing to kind of refer to is you look at all the four pillars and you kind of figure out within each of those pillars, what do you need to work on the most? Um, and and you take a, a bit of all that in all the pillars and work on them, you know, kind of at the same time, because tennis it is a very complex game. You just can't work on one thing at a time. You know, like you can't just be working on this one technical thing and then completely ignore your fitness, for example. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> what I think you want to look at is go, okay, from a technique perspective, what is deployable and what is right underneath deployable? Like I'm kind of good at it, but I know I've got this itch in there that I would get, get rid of it that could then become deployable in my matches. I would work on that first and work on it very religiously, you know, and, and, and by that, I don't mean you have to watch it every single day, but the way the chart explains is like, you wanna watch, if you watch a session the first day, you wanna watch it like within a day or two later. Then you wanna watch it three to five days later, then a week later, then you can start watching them, you know, a couple times a month and, and you keep going back to that. Uh, so I would work on that technique wise. And then let's say it's fitness. You go, okay, now out, out of the, out of fitness, it, it's, what is it about? It's about footwork. It's about, um, endurance. It's about explosion. It's mm -hmm. about Power. injury prevention mm -hmm. out of all of that. You know, what do I need to work on the most to get the most out of my game? I would definitely take maybe some footwork exercises and then maybe look at your body and go, this part of my body is, is in the most danger. I've got to really take care of this part of my body. So I would say within fitness, you got to have to work on, I would work on always footwork technique because I think you need to keep your footwork sharp. So that should always be there. Yeah. And then look at your body and figure out, okay, what do I need to do to uh, stay healthy? And then you do the same thing with strategy and the same thing with mental. You know, Maybe you come up with like, there's something called the 16 second cure yeah. where you basically can uh, work out a ritual in between points and maybe you go, okay, mentally for this month, I'm just going to try and get really comfortable with my rituals in between points. So I do think you need to work on everything at one time, because when you go out and you play a match, you do have to execute technically. You do have to execute mentally. You do have to get the right shot at the right time and you have to be fit. So that all has to work. That's why it's the four pillars to, to yeah. being playing well. They, they, they can't, you can't just go out there and, and have what you just can't have technique, for example, and just not be fit and hit terrible shot selection. You're not going to win. So these all need to be worked on, but you just pick like one out of each section or one or two out of each section. So you can keep the whole train moving without getting overwhelmed up here. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. 16 second care. I think that was a gym layer, right? Yeah. Peter? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Dr. Tom Morris from sessions were amazing. Well worth the time and money. The variety of coaches is great. Hard to pick one best. Awesome. Love to hear that, Tom. Thank you. Um, let's see. Let's see what else we got here. Um, expect to be nervous. Commit to playing even though you're nervous and breathe to relax. Definitely. Definitely true. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Um, let me scroll back down um i think we got some new ones um glenn awesome i'm a sports conditioning trainer and follow the usca tennis conditioning book frequently for avoiding injury building strength and flexibility awesome glenn that's fantastic yeah i i definitely have a soft spot in my heart for uh for fitness you know i just love uh training going to the gym on court fitness um and it's just so important for us uh to to really be able to last in matches to you know, replicate the power moves over and over again, the footwork. It's, it's not easy. It's not easy. Um, so great work there. 
Uh, Ultra attempts, nice balance. Some coaches push a pillar versus all others to sell a course. It depends on awareness, like Pete just said. That is true. That's true. You do hear some say this is the most important, that's the most important. And, you know, I mean, and, coaches and have different views. Online but... instruction, I mean, sometimes you just want to focus on one thing. And, you know, yeah. I, I realize you guys are all, here's my suggestion. When you see our, you know, we all support each other. We obviously, you see us all email for each other. And when you get, I, I don't want you guys to feel pressure to buy everything every time. That's not what I'm, that's, you know, that's not what I want you to do. That's not what Maribel wants you to do. That's not what yeah. any of us want you to do. But when you get a certain um, topic that all of a sudden hits you and stops you in your tracks, you're like, whoa, like this playbook thing. I never thought about this, these playbooks or, or, you know, like Will has or things like that. Or if it's a serve course, you're like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. And my serve yeah. really has been struggling lately. Our back end course, then you should buy it. If you feel like, you know what, I, I feel confident right now on my back end. You don't, you don't need to then, maybe it's not yeah. the time for that back end course. Uh, so that's, you know, how I prefer that you guys view it. Now, I do think that the tennis summit is a little different because it basically takes the best out of all of us. And it encompasses the entire game of tennis to where it's a hell of a library you have on everything. And, and it's there and, and you can always go back to it. And it's, and it's a, it's a big variety of stuff. And it's, and it's all the stuff that we need within each pillar. Like marathon has got stuff on, you know, speed, endurance, injury prevention, yoga, flexibility, <laughs> footwork drills. So it's like yeah. all there. That, that's why I think that's why I do think the tennis summit and tennis cons a little different because it takes everything from everybody and puts them into one warehouse and says, have at it and, and make sure, but the way that you really get it is how I taught you guys tonight. Maribon, maybe, cause I know we've been on almost an hour and a half. Maybe you want to bring out uh, everything that they get and, uh, and let them get a chance to see if they want to do it if they haven't done it yet. And, uh, yeah. I just want to thank you guys for, for your time. And it's been a lot of fun, all these live streams. Oh, God, it's been so much fun. And yeah, I think, I mean, you're all going to get a kick out of like how much stuff we're <laughs> offering. So it's, and I have like some surprise bonuses. So basically with the Tennis Summit All Access Pass, it's only 97, one-time payment. You know, I get questions about that sometimes. You get lifetime access to the 40 Summit Masterclass session. So like we said, you know, any of these sessions on on the four pillars, the technique, strategy, fitness, mental game, um, you have you can refer to them days, months, weeks, years, months from now. Um, and and, you know, very amazing content that I'm using myself. Um, you get the audio MP3 downloads as well. So you can listen to them anytime you want, anywhere you want. So super valuable. It's just like you have you know, 40 some podcasts <laughs> on all this great information. You also get the transcripts of the summit sessions, which my team is working super hard on, on, um, you know, creating and uploading. So those will all be there eventually. And then you'll have the summit implementation worksheet to help you, um, you know, as I think, was it Colin or Jay looks said to take notes, um, and to take out the, the most important points out of each session. You get also exclusive access to the Summit Facebook group. Um, so, um, you know, a lot of the All Access Pass members are in there and we can, you know, talk about tennis and ask questions and, and coaches will pop in there. We also have the members only live streams with myself, um, which is always fun. And then we have the special deals and discounts from our sponsors. So we get a lot of the coaches who will give you like discount codes and things like that to their courses and other things. So um, that's in there. And then we also have, you get, <laughs> you get a free set of a Signum pro or Genesis strings from my friend, Richard Gronewald to the, the, the tennis strings and, and racket um, live stream session. So that is also a really cool pro right there. I mean, that's just up to 15 bucks in value of string. So awesome. And they make high level stuff. And then you, <laughs> Peter, just so thankful for you. You're not only getting all of this stuff that we mentioned for only 97 bucks, which is less than the price of a tennis lesson in many places. You also get Peter's next level doubles course, a $97 value. And then you'll get his solo shots, a 30 day program, another $97 value. I'll let you talk about 
you know, describe those um, programs and I'll go to the next bo bonus after that. Yeah. So next level doubles, there it is in my library right there. And, and so it's got 108 videos that you can go through and it's a really awesome course. Uh, again, I'll just read out some of the topics in case you haven't heard them or you're still on the fence, but we have, and, and basically I, I may, I like to make my big courses. Like when I put 108 videos, the reason why there's so many is I usually put out a survey and I say, Hey, if I'm, I'm making a doubles course, what do you need? What are you struggling with? And so there's all these answers that come from you guys. I'm like, wow, those are good, good, good problems. Let me solve them. So it's when to poach. We know that people worry and wonder, when am I going to poach? Like Will talks about, you know, are you having poachable balls whiz past you? So it's when to poach, when and how to uh, come to the net in a doubles rally. That's another thing you can't figure out. Sometimes they go in at the wrong time on the wrong ball, and then they get the ball put right at their feet or they get lobbed over right away. When and how do I set up my partner to close out a point? Like Roy Emerson talks about, you play doubles for your partner. You know, what does that mean? <laughs> um, Gigi Fernandez says that playing with Martina wasn't necessarily the greatest for her, even though she won a grand slam with her because she felt like they weren't exactly on the same page and she didn't know where Martina was going to go with her shots lots of times. So it was a little bit of a, she kind of felt like she was in quicksand because she didn't know what Martina was going to hit. You know, that's exam an example of what it feels like when you're playing with somebody, you're like, well, I don't know. We're like on the same page and how that can make you feel. Um, how to understand how effective your shots were and take advantage. Best tactic to play with a weak partner. How to play with forever changing partners. These are all, again, you guys basically gave me all the information that you wanted to learn. Um, what do I do to neutralize somebody who is a poach monster? Uh, what side should I play on? How to deal with people who dink and lob? What happens when I am the inferior player? Sometimes you go out there, you're the weakest player on the court. Uh, running plays with your partner. And it, the list goes on and on. Okay, that's, I haven't even obviously gone through 108 videos to explain it because then that would just take forever. So that's one thing I have as a bonus. Then the next thing, and the reason why I made this course, all my courses I make are inspired by you guys. This is called Solo Shots. It's a 30-day do-it-yourself practice system. And if you've got a ball machine, it's fantastic. And it shows you basically the technique on every shot from forehand, backhand, volley, serves, drop shots, lobs, all that kind of stuff, top spin, slice. And it gives you drills to do each day. Uh, it basically gives you a practice session to do that's very specific. And just like kind of like with Maribond stuff, it comes with a drill book and a download schedule. And it's a lot of fun. When I made the course, I loved it because I was hitting the balls like pretty much every day making the course. So it was a lot. It was one of my most fun courses to make. And uh, and the reason why I made it is I had so many people would come start come visit me and they say, you know what I really don't like is that I'm, I'm here visiting you and I love to take these lessons. But when I go home, I can't find anybody to practice with. They don't want to actually get better. They just want to play matches. And so that's why I made that course. And so those two courses, because I know we had a lot of doubles players on tonight's call, and we got a lot of people who want to get better. Otherwise, you wouldn't be listening to this at 930 at night. So those are the two bonuses that I've added. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks a lot for that, Pete. And yeah, awesome but, but bonuses. Let me be that... clear, though. When you yeah. click my special link, because some people yeah. are emailing me saying, well, I didn't click your link, but can I get the bonus? No. When you click my special link, that's when you get the bonus. And also, if you have purchased before today and you still don't have your bonuses from me, email me at crunchtimecoaching at gmail.com because uh, I was pretty much caught up with everybody going into today. It was like just the people from yesterday. I gave the list to my uh, support web developer. And so we pretty much have caught up with everybody. And so if you don't have it and you're like, well, I bought off your link four days ago, Pete, and I don't see my bonus, either A, you've missed the email that we've sent, you just didn't see it, or B, somehow we missed you. So either way, just remind me that you don't have your bonus, and I will make sure to get it to you. Awesome, awesome. And I have um, Peter's email right there. So yeah, again, if you click through to, uh, or click on Peter's link, and I, I just put that link in the comments section so you can use that and you need to use that to get 
um, Peter's bonuses. Um, and, you know, if you bought previously through someone else, then you would get, you know, their bonuses and because you're linked through them. Um, but feel free to email me if you have any questions or anything about that and we'll get you sorted out. Um, and then on top of that, I am just in the spirit of giving. And, you know, I, I think that, you know, for you, those of you who act today, I want to give you more bonuses. So what I'm going to do is to give you Tennis Summit 3 plus the top 10 podcast interviews of all time. And so that is another summit for you all um, because, you know, I was looking through my summits and I saw that, you know, Tennis Summit 3 had some really good stuff in there. And I said, you know what, um, that's out there. And I just want to give it to you all as well um, as another bonus. So I just want to, you know, make sure that you, um, you know, get the all access pass because it's really just, um, you know, a great tool, a great library that you want to refer to um, over and over again um, to help you level up your game. So we can get you all of these bonuses here on the screen um, if you use Peter's link today. So um, and again, email me if you have any questions, email Peter um, if you registered through his link before today and didn't get the bonuses yet. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so that is that's pretty much it. Um, I just want to highly encourage you to you know take the steps that you need to improve your game, take action. Um, you know, it's great to watch things and enjoy them, but to truly um, succeed and and you know um, you know move forward in your tennis journey, you're going to need to um, consistently be learning and consistently be iterating and reviewing things over and over again um in order to succeed so i mean just like in school you know like i mean i can read something in one go and then like pass an exam i had to read it over and over until i got it so um same thing with tennis so yeah any any other thoughts peter just again great job and um also as we were just talking it just reminded me of um how tennis is the number one sport in the world, there's so many great sports out there, but you look it up. What's the number one sport for longevity? Mm. Tennis is number one. Yes. It beats running. It beats swimming. It beats basketball. It beats everything. And I believe the reason why it's number one is because they talk about as you get older, right? That the important thing is to keep your mind challenged and your body challenged. Just like Lou Hollander said, if you don't use it, you lose it. If you don't use it, you lose it. And that reminded me of another older gentleman who inspired me uh, in Atlanta. They have this place called Spa Sedel. It's like legendary here in Atlanta. It's just being known as a great um, successful business. And this guy who owned it, he uh, went back to school on campus with kids in his late 70s, early 80s. And he came in there and he talked about the reason why he did it was because after his brother and dad retired, they literally retired. They retired to the couch <laughs> and they were both dead within months i mean that's oh, a very sad story that's sad yeah but obviously that shook him up and he's like well damn i'm, I'm not gonna do that i'm gonna keep going and so you know he attributed his his message was keep learning no matter what your age and tennis is a sport the it's 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 the great part and the bad part it will humble you if you don't stay on top of it if you don't stay on top of tennis, it's going to it's gonna eat you up. It's going to eat you for lunch. But it's the same thing with life. If you don't stay on top of your life, that's yeah. why tennis is such a great metaphor for life. Yeah. Of course, everybody wants to take the easy way out. You know? But if you don't take on, stay on top of your life, your life is going to kick your butt. You know? And, and you guys, uh, so many of the people that I meet are ultra successful who who play tennis and watch these summits and then come out to our things. So they know exactly what I'm talking about. And, and that's why I admire and I call you totally obsessed players because you're constantly trying to learn. You're constantly trying to get better. 
And to me, that's the beauty in this. I don't care if you're a 3.0. I don't care if you're 3.5. I don't care if you're 4. I don't care what number is behind you. That's not important. It's that you keep getting up. You don't give up. You keep trying to learn. And when you do that, you've got this beautiful sport that is the best sport to pay attention to as long as you're on this planet. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the best sports ever. Uh, the best sport. So, and just to, you know, quick review. I love making these little banners for you. Number one in the four pillars of, of um, tennis mastery is technique. Number two, strategy. Number three, mental Number four, fitness, because I know you all like to ask for <laughs> recaps and stuff. Um, but yeah, I yeah, I mean, what a great um, topic for today. And I just want to thank Pete so much and just want to put that offer on the screen one more time. Um, so we've got, you know, all of these great things here um, for the All Access Pass, plus Peter's two programs, Next Level Doubles and Solo Shots 30-Day Program, plus Tennis Summit 3 and my top 10 podcast interviews. Uh, if you use Peter's link that I put in the chat. Um, all right. Let's see. Um, Dr. Success. Uh, so just email Peter. I like Peter's info, but I've already got the Alexis pass. Um, well, actually, sorry. Uh, first off, make sure that you use Peter's link and you can verify with me if you've done that. And then, um, then I'll, at, you know, we'll have you email Peter. Um, if that's the case. And then Jay, look, the best advice I've heard is that your NTRP rating does not define you. It also does not play the points for you. That's very true. It's mm -hmm. very true. I mean, I like to just not even think about it, to be honest, and just try to work on my game, develop my game, develop the four pillars um, concurrently uh, to improve. So yeah, uh, one more time, I'll put in the link uh, for Peter's um, bonuses here um, and definitely highly encourage you to use it. So Peter, any final thoughts? No, I had a great time. I, I, yeah. I love you guys. It's been fun. You guys are uh, a massive part of my life. I don't know if you can really <laughs> understand or appreciate it when I say that, but it's true. Massive part of my life. Massive part of my enjoyment. A uh, huge part of my purpose in life. So I just appreciate you guys continuing to stay around. <laughs> Awesome. And before I give my little spiel at the end, uh, maybe the hyper-focused hyper tennis camp of uh, Yeah, hyper-focused tennis camp, of course. It's us four players and me. Oops. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's his. And yeah, Peter loves doing those camps and definitely encourage you to check that out uh, as well. But yeah, um, as for me, um, same here. Love you guys. Love you, Peter, as well. And yeah. Um, it just really is fulfilling to be able to. Well, wait a minute, you know, Mary, but I didn't say I love what? you. I said I love them. Oh, that's fine. No, I'm just. I, of course, <laughs> I love Maribon. Of course, I. Love oh, them. thanks, man. Appreciate it. But uh, yeah, it's it's been a privilege for sure. And I I really every every year that Peter and I go on our final live stream, I always say I can't believe it's over. And I'm sure Pete feels the same way. And also when he does his tennis con event. But yeah, that's that's it for me, for us, for Tennis Sub at 2023. So I want to thank you so much for tuning in and just want to uh, encourage you to keep working hard, hard, um, keep being persistent, keep being a problem solver. And and that way you'll uh, keep improving your game. Get the all access pass as well through Peter's link. And yeah, with that, thanks so much and uh, have a great one. And until next time. See you guys. See you all. Thanks so much.